call to order the meeting for um, December 17th, and would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And item number three will be roll call. Council Dayline. Present. Council Donovan. Present. Council Katarina. Present. Council St. Clair. Here. Council Blaze. Here. Council Hayes. Here. Council Chair Holbrook. And I am here as well. So thank you for your patience. We had our annual council goal setting, so I apologize. We were 10 minutes late to start this evening. And at this time, we will take item number four, which is general public comments. As per council rules, your name and address, you have three minutes. We also have a new system, you'll notice, sitting at the podium. There is a red light, a yellow light, and a green light. If you have yellow, you have one minute remaining for your three minutes, and if you have red, you are past your three minutes. So um, go ahead, and I see we have somebody at the podium, so name and address. My name is Mike Doyle, I live in Falmouth. I own falmouthtoday.me. I run a number of stories about the police department in Scarborough. Last July, I ran a story about the police officer, uh, Josh Gway, compromising a drug investigation. During that month, Somebody in the interagency uh, access to the computer system printed out a report from Biddeford. They mailed that report to an employee of Scarborough for one reason and one reason only, to terrorize that person. Whoever <coughs> sent me put my name and return address, my home address on the return address of the envelope. This is my formal notification on suing the town of Scarborough and anyone involved in that activity. It's a falsification of use of my name. I've reported this to the uh, United States Postal Inspectors. They're going to look into it. I believe the uh, Attorney General's office may be investigating it soon. Whoever did this only could access it from a police office uh, computer. My understanding is that the only people that can print something like this is a sergeant or above. So it was somebody in the command structure of Scarborough Police that printed this out. And my final comment is, is anyone going to do anything about Chief Moan accessing pornographic sites from the police department? Stop. Stop. Talking about um, I, employees. I, I, That's I, my final comment, but I, I'd like to know if somebody's going to do something about that. Thank you. Hi. On another note entirely, Carol Rancourt, 23 Black Point Road, and I'm here tonight. Uh, in commemorating my dad, Lou Rancourt, who was a resident of Scarborough since uh, 1952. Mm. He served in the United States Army in World War II, went in in 1940 before uh, Pearl Harbor, had a suspicion that we were going to war. And I'm here tonight to remind everybody that last night was the begin, or yesterday was the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge. Mm. Um, my father fought in that battle. Uh, he actually was in a cognac cellar with his buddies uh, when the Germans rolled into the town he was in in the northern section of Belgium. He happened to go outside for a few minutes uh, to take a, a little pause <laughs> and saw the Germans rolling in and warned his buddies, and they managed to escape by hiding and then getting away. Um, I just want to say that starting in 2015, as you know, um, it will be the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, and Scarborough had many, many, many of its sons fight in World War II. Mm. Although my father was not a son of Scarborough, he graduated from Cape Elizabeth High School, he certainly made Scarborough his permanent home in his adulthood. Um, May 8th is the formal day of VE Day, and um, we have a parade in town for Memorial Day. Um, the VJ Day, uh, formal uh, day, is September 2nd, although hostilities ended on August 15th. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, Scarborough Fest in August, and I would like to recommend that the town commemorate the end of World War II and our brave American, American men and women, because there were many women mm -hmm. who served, if they not in combat, but they served during World War II. And I would like to see that... Um, a summer fest be dedicated to those people and that we, with our fireworks, perhaps have a, a military sort of um, 
music along with it instead of rock and roll this year, Mm -hmm. although I enjoy the rock and roll very much. (laughs) Also, I thought it might be wonderful to have a flag ceremony that day um, with um, our military uh, people here in Scarborough. I know, Sean, you're involved in the American Legion. Yes. But we have the AMVETS, we have the mm-hmm. FW, we have lot, we have active yeah. guards and um, here who still are serving. We have many retired, and we have a few, although they're getting less and less, mm-hmm. or two veterans still living here in Scarborough today. Mm-hmm. So I would like, uh, hopefully, that Scarborough will commemorate 2015 in remembrance of our brave men and women who served in World War II and certainly brought, although not total peace to the world, uh, brought peace for a long time. And uh, this is my dad, by the way, and these are, I, I made this up for him before he passed away. Mm-hmm. And I'm very proud of him, and I have to say at the same time, my uncle, who was a Scarborough resident all of his mature life, and actually worked for the town of Scarborough in the school department, was at Pearl Harbor when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor as well. So I have it on both ends, V J and V E. So with that, um, I thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Carol, so Tom was writing some notes, so I'm I'm sure. <laughs> um, so I I don't particularly see why there's. I know where to cut, find yeah. Carol if I have no. questions. So I, I'm sure we can probably make something out. Uh, was there anybody else that wished to speak? General public comments? These are um, your time to come speak on non-agenda items. All right, seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment. And we are on to item number five, which is minutes. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. And any discussion, errors, omissions? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? And it's moved. Um, adjustments to the agenda, there are none. Um, treasurer's warrants I will come to through the meeting. I'll deal with this along the meeting. So number eight is non-action item, which is an update from, um, well, the progress of the Benjamin Farm. And so we have Jeremy um, Winterstein, if you'd like to come up and speak to us about what's, what's going on. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, so um, thrilled to... Uh, let you know. I think most of you all, most of you should know, or hopefully you do, that uh, this carpet, the Lantra is closed on Benjamin Farm last late last week. I think on Friday. So we've been working on this project for over 16 years, and we're absolutely thrilled that uh, it's finally happened. So just want to say thank you to Scarborough voters, to the Scarborough Town Council, to the Parks and Conservation Land Bond Board. Um, it's been a long time coming, and so we're really excited. We're sh- shifting now from acquisition mode to stewardship and management mode, um, and we'll be working with Tom Hall and others at Town Hall to to um, do this in partnership with the town. I sent um, a letter to to you all that you hopefully have in your packet regarding um, a possible state funding program that we have been pursuing, the New England Cottontail Habitat Program. We after we worked on this for a long time with. Um, Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Long story short, we felt that the program's requirements were, were weren't the right fit for the property. Um, there were inevi- there were going to be inevitable conflicts with dogs, with public access, with trails, with agriculture, some scenic ramifications. There is also a possibility that the 20-year management agreement um, would become open-ended, uh, depending on. Uh, what happens with the cottontails. So this is coming to a head as we worked with uh, the town attorneys, Pete Van Hemmel, uh, as we were writing the, um, the covenants and restrictions, which essentially look to the town's interest in this property. And we felt that we had to have local control and public access and trails take primacy over, over other aspects. So that's why we decided to pass on the cottontail component of it. If there are future cottontail possibilities for Benjamin Farm, we would still like to pursue that. And if those can come to be, those would be possible for the property and those would be viewed as a reimbursement to the land bond. Um, But I wanted to let you all know that it's closed and see if you had any questions and and just say thank you. 
Uh, Bill? Uh, Jeremy, have you set out for uh, IFW what terms would be acceptable to the Scarborough Land Trust? We've we've said we've basically said some of the things that we can't. Yes and no. We've said some of the things that we can't. We one of the things that was important to us was to have a trail connection with the Willie with a with the Willie property to Benjamin Farm, and the way the property. I believe there's a map in your packet. Um, the wildlife area that they've proposed basically is the whole border of the Willie property. So essentially, we can't have dogs and there can't be trails in the wildlife area. We push back on them, and we just have not been able to come to a to a happy medium. Um, originally, there was a much bigger area that was proposed. I think it was about 60 acres. Um, so we basically said, you know, we can't really. We have to, you know, with the land bond and with local donors, we just have there has to be just local control and local, you know, trails and stuff like that. Seems as if if you make it clear to them what would be acceptable, then they have a benchmark against which, if they can move to it, fine. If they can't, then you're comfortable with the position. You yeah. there, they may. I don't know what's going to happen with the program. They may put it out to bid to not put it out to bid. They may put it out. They may put an RFP proposal RFP out to area conservation organizations and towns. Um, and we would have, if they do that, we would have the right to apply for that. Um, there is another restriction, um, no trails within, I think, 250 feet of the, of, the, of, the, um, of the wildlife zone. And so that was something that we felt was uh, just not workable. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, or comments? I didn't, or? I, didn't, no? I didn't have a question. I just wanted to say good job. Great. I know it's yeah. been... A, well, it's an extremely long process for you, and it must feel pretty amazing to step back and look at that beautiful piece of property that you have acquired, and I think all of Scarborough is going to benefit greatly from it. So great job. Right. Well, thank you. And thank, you to, thank you to Scarborough and the land bond. Yeah. Mm. And anything, any other comments? Questions? Sorry. Uh, no, no, you, no, no, just... <laughs> I don't have a question. I was just going to say congratulations and, and um, thank you for all of your hard work and I'm sure tireless, tireless hours of, you know, um, it, it takes a lot to pull pull a big project like that together. So, um, and the fundraising initiative too, um, you know, congratulations. It, it's, it's an exceptionally awesome thing you've done for this community. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and move on to order number 14-101 is a public hearing and action on the following applicants who have applied for renewal of their manufactured housing community's license. And is there anybody here from the public that would like to speak on this? All right. And seeing none, we'll go ahead and close public comment. And is there a motion? So moved. Second. And discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, just for the general public to, to understand what these are, are um, just our annual kind of renewal licenses. Um, we do have, believe it or not, um, they're far and few, but we do have some, some mobile homes here in, here in Scarborough. So um, it's just kind of a regular housekeeping kind of matter. So um, all those in favor? And opposed? And none? Okay. So, full business is 14-102, act on the names posted to the various town committees and boards as recommended by the appointments committee at the town council meeting. Um, again, is there anybody from the public that would like to speak to this matter? All right. And seeing none, we'll close public comment. And is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. And any discussion? All right. Do you mind? No, I just want to thank everyone who's um, signed up to be on a board. Um, it takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, it's a volunteer position, and I want to give thanks to everybody from the community who who gives back to Scarborough in that uh, in that way. So. All right. And anybody else? And. Okay. All right. All those in favor? All right. And so on to new business. 
So we have order number 14-103 is the first reading and refers to the planning board on the proposed first amendment to contract zone three, life, main life care retirement community, Inc. Located at, <coughs> at, located at 15 Piper Road. And um, before, we'll say, well, we do have a little presentation that, that they had wanted to give to us, so we're going to go ahead and start with that, and then we'll open for public comment and then questions. So, um, and whenever you're ready. Good, out, or good evening. I'm Jim Adamovich, CEO of Piper Shores. With us this evening are Andrea Collard from Piper Shores, Mike Tatama Whelan from FST Engineering, and Ron Epstein, Legal Counsel to Piper Shores. Um, we're pleased to present this project um, for the council. Um, we are a campus of 138 acres. We are proposing some modifications to the contract zoning agreement that would permit an expansion of assisted living on the Piper Shores property. We're proposing an increase up to 28 accommodations for assisted living that would be proposed to be built um, contiguous with the existing Holbrook building, which is on property that is not presently conserved. We're also interested in adding up to 3,500 square feet on property that is not conserved part of the Piper Shores existing property to add an arts and crafts building. Uh, the areas highlighted on the map for your benefit, the area highlighted in orange represents the assisted living addition. The building itself would have a footprint of about 31 or so thousand square feet. Um, the adjacent small uh, building across from the uh, assisted living addition represents about 3,500 square feet of arts building. Again, neither of these properties are conserved at present. This is a footprint, if you will, of existing parking and the plinth that is proposed to be built to um, support um, a total of three stories, which would be um, consistent with the existing use of the property. And again, demonstrating how we would intend to construct the new square footage with uh, parking on the ground level and then two, two floors of licensed assisted living accommodations. This is um, a very early schematic rendering of the second floor of this addition, which would represent the addition of 12 accommodations for residents at an assisted living level of care that have memory support dementia care needs. This would be a new service to the Piper Shores community as a distinct part program for residents in assisted living with memory care issues. We anticipate being able to provide a full continuum of services within assisted living, from the housing to meal services to programming, recreation, and all other services that might be required. The building would be proposed to connecting to the existing Holbrook building in the lower left-hand uh, side of the schematic. You'll see a, about a 30-foot connection that would tie the new construction to the existing Holbrook building. We expect to tie that building together on both the second and third floors of the existing Holbrook building. This is a proposed schematic of a third floor addition which would provide Again, assisted living accommodations, up to 16 accommodations for residents who require assistance with activities of daily living at an assisted living level of care, but do not necessarily require specialized memory support care services. This is an early conceptual rendering of the proposed addition to assisted living. Again, we are thinking that the uh, the elevation of the building would be very consistent with the character of the existing Piper Shores community. We think it, it works very well together and we would propose uh, to add on to the facility in a similar manner. In terms of the contract zoning agreement amendment that would be suggested would be an increase in building area footprint in the area of 30,400 square feet. 
that the addition of assisted living would encompass tw up to 28 units of licensed assisted living adjacent to the existing Holbrook uh, community, and that the proposed new arts building would be a single story structure not to exceed 3,500 square feet. And that concludes the formal presentation that we have. If there are any questions from council that any member of our Piper Shores team can respond to, we'd be pleased to do so. All right, so um, what we're going to do is real quick, um, we're going to do public comment, and then we'll come back to council for council comments and mm -hmm. questions. So at this time, was there anybody from the public that wished to speak on this item? All right, well, seeing none, um, we'll go ahead and come back to the council. And were there any questions from, from the council for okay, Jean Marie? Uh, just a real quick question, it could be because I wasn't listening carefully, <laughs> which isn't unusual. Uh, did you say these will not be memory care or a certain percentage of memory care? And Yes, what we're proposing is a total of 28 accommodations increase. 12 would be identi identified for memory okay. support. Okay. The remaining 16 for the more traditional okay. assisted living services. I, I'm sorry, I missed that 12. Okay, thank you. And Sean? Ladies first. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's a new new service for you? You don't have that existing now, do you? Actually we do. We have twenty accommodations that are part of the current contract zoning agreement for assisted living. So it would be a net increase of twenty eight. For memory care. No, for assisted living. Memory care is Memory care is not a level of care per se. It is not a licensed level of care. Okay. It is it is a segmentation of an assisted living level of care, if you will. Okay. It's a specialized program encompassed by assisted right. living. And John? Thank you. Uh, a couple of questions. One is, um, what is the maximum outlay for that area? I mean, is this... Um, um, is there additional opportunity for growth later on? Is this the last time we may see it? I mean, I know that maybe Piper Shores may not have thought that far further. Maybe this is better for the town planner, but, you know, can this even grow even beyond this? And it's more of a generalization comment that I'm having with this. I mean, uh, my, my apologies, just because I, I realize you were new to it. We did have a workshop, but... I don't, you weren't on the council, and I believe Peter wasn't either. So um, if you would, just kind of talk yeah, a little bit about... Um, with our discussions with the town officials going back, oh gosh, about 15 or so months, um, we had talked about the prospect of what the long-term vision for Piper Shores may include. What we're demonstrating in the submittal today is what Piper Shores believes in the near term is the requirement to provide the care and service to the residents that we contract with. Um, whether there would be a prospect at additional growth in the future, I, I think that remains to be seen. Um, in some of our preliminary planning, we did identify whether it would be possible to, to add on to, at the existing Holbrook site, some additional accommodations. We think that, that it may, in fact, be viable to continue the building structure so that we connect on both ends of the existing Holbrook site but we don't envision that to be part of our planning, certainly in the near and intermediate term. Thank you. Uh, the last question I have is regarding more about the process, because tonight, if I understand, we're only proving the first reading to send it to the planning board. Mm -hmm. At the highest level, can you explain what the planning board process is as far as inclusiveness with uh, citizen and abutter uh, input? I can, uh, although I do recognize uh, the town planner and senior planner are here, and they're probably best to field that question. If as Dan takes the podium, there was a memorandum that Jay actually put together about six months ago. I'll dust that off and send that back Please, around that talks you. about the process. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, the, the next step, should the council approve first reading this evening, is to go to the planning board. The planning board would conduct a public hearing like you will do later in the process. They also are going to look at the... Uh, the site plan for the proposal, and they need to issue a, a preliminary site plan approval, so not a full review, but an initial review 
and find it um, adequate for preliminary approval before it comes back to the council. And then it would come back to the council for your public hearing and then your second reading. And then after second reading, you're, you approve the contract zone amendment and the final action would be planning board final site plan approval. So it's a four or so step process from tonight moving forward. So do we um, send communications to the neighbors and abutters and the citizens uh, about when their opportunity is? And, and by the way, I, I partially know the answer, but I think it needs to be brought forth. Yeah, there's I was on the council the last time that the, when the initial one came forward and it was a very contentious issue about the public hearings and the public meetings and trying to rush it through, or the perception that we rushed it through, and I just want to make sure that we exhaust every opportunity for them to be involved. So for the planning board public hearing and the preliminary uh, site review, there is notification to abutters, okay. I believe, within 500 feet um, per the ordinance, and there's also notice on our website of planning board agendas and notice in the paper okay. um, That's what twice for. prior to the, the public hearing. Good. Thank you. There's a, there's a follow-up, and I think Jim is probably going to jump up and speak to it. I know they've uh, reached out and engaged the neighborhood, and you can define who that neighborhood is um, at least once so far. Ye perhaps yes, before. we did. We, As a follow-up to the working session that we had with Council and the Planning Board in September, one of the strong encouragements was for us to reach out to abutters to, mm -hmm. to talk further about our plans, both near-term and long-term vision. On December 2nd, we held a a meeting uh, at Camp Ketcha that we had um, invited 60 abutters, I believe, on both sides of Spurwink and on either side of, of Piper Shore's existing property. We had about 21 abutters mm -hmm. present for that meeting, and we talked both about our, our near-term vision, which included the assisted living and the arts building growth, and also talked briefly about our longer-term um, prospective vision for the Piper Shores community. Um, I would say that the, the general sense of those in attendance, uh, the abutters attending, suggested that um, the, the addition of assisted living would not be an unwelcomed addition to the Piper Shores property. So we were pleased to be able to reach out to, to neighbors at least you know once thus far. Thank you. Did we have any other questions? Okay. Um, I did have just a couple things. Um, I did receive an email. Um, I know you said you've done some some outreach, and, and we have requirements in our own due process. Um, that's the one, your own, thank you. Um, so if we can just kind of make sure that we do include um, Oceanwood condominiums on Oceanwood Drive. Um, we did get a letter, like I said, this afternoon. Um, I'm not sure if they were included in, in, in that, but um, they are certainly interested in being apprised of um, and from staff purposes um, when we do our mailings to the abutters to make sure that they're, they're included. They do have some concerns about water and, and those sorts of things, which I'm sure are a function of planning board and, and, and all those things will get worked out on, at that level. Um, so there was that, and then I, I did want to touch base on, um, I know Tom has at this point reached out to you a little bit and, and talked to you about affordable housing. So um, my question for you is, um, although we don't have that as um, a set and fast rule for all of our high density zoning, um, we do have some affordable requirements in two of our zoning districts and, and potentially the town might be looking to expand that. So. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about that concept? Um, yes, and, it, and I might address the first point that you made from the Oceanwood community. They were part of the invitee list as okay. abutters. We did talk briefly at the meeting on December 2nd about water and drainage, but it was not in connection with the growth at the Holbrook site. It was really part of a longer-term vision on the northeast section of our property. Um, with regard to um, the second matter, Tom and I did have dialogue late last week and then early this week uh, with both uh, Tom and Dan. Um, we would like to be able to take the opportunity to, to learn a bit more about the ordinance. We really haven't had an opportunity to spend very much time at this, at this point with regard to the ordinance, but that's something that internally Piper Shores would like to be able to, to fully process. So. I'm not sure that we have any anything um, this evening that would be of 
value in responding to that particular comment. But okay. we will certainly take it into account and, and dialogue internally. Okay. Um, is there any other questions at this point before we move to discussion? So we need a motion. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Um, so at this point we do need a motion for mm -hmm. this. Second. Okay. And discussion. Could I just add a point of clarity and, and Jim forgive me for not correcting you but um, just adding to you. Your final slide provided a quick overview of the changes, the substantive changes to the ordinance amendment. You listed three. I believe there's a third one, a fourth one. I just want to make sure the council appreciates that. There was an opportunity to, to correct a, a, a kind of a nuance in the agreement having to do with residents. Right. Uh, there was a particular situation where um, um, a resident and their spouse resided there l under all the requirements. The spouse passed away. Uh, the remaining surviving spouse was actually under the minimum age. Oh, yeah. um, and so this just simply corrects that sort of situation. So I, I don't think it has any bearing on really this proposal, but it was seen as an opportunity to kind of correct a wrong that was recognized. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Great. Um, so again, I'm going to kind of put it out there. Any Any discussion? I just wanted, okay. yeah, if you don't mind, I just wanted to clarify real quick that, you know, follow. I guess following up on something that um, Sean had said was, it, this is, this is it. I mean, do you, do you future plans to keep coming back? I mean, I guess I just my concern is, you know, we're we're all for growth and we want growth and, but, you know, I've. I'm just wondering what the future is for the, I guess. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I should phrase this. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to kind of follow up on what Sean said. I want to make sure that, you know, you're growing and getting bigger, which is a wonderful thing. It's, some, it's a need that needs to be met. It's just <coughs> how big is so big? How big is big? How big is big? <laughs> How big is too big? It, it, In all, I'm just being very honest and frank. It, it's it's a compelling question. I guess my short answer to your question is that as we look at the changing and evolving needs of the Piper Shores community, we're now 13 plus years old. Yeah. So services and the nature of services that are required continues to evolve based upon um, the aging and changing nature of our residents. We're also seeing life expectancies grow much greater. So the, the prospect of assisted and other supportive care will obviously increase as age increases. Um, it's very difficult for say that, to say that this is the full extent of growth and that there will never be another interest or a requirement to grow. Um, to some extent that is factored in by the amount of growth that may or may not occur in the future with independent living. Mm -hmm. Because most of the residents that are moving into assisted living and skilled care are, work, are making their way to those levels of care through the continuum of independent living first and then moving to higher levels of care. So it's a difficult question for us to provide full certainty. I do think that as we look at the current complement of the community, with 200 dwelling units for independent living. We believe our assisted living accommodations will be well met with this proposed addition of 28 units. Beyond that, it would be very hard to respond with certainty. I, I, perhaps I could give you some comfort in that, regardless of what their interest might be, this council or a future council will control every step of that development vis-a-vis uh, -vis the contract zone. It's a very unique situation in that regard as opposed to um, things happening at the planning board level without the involvement or knowledge or involvement of the council. The council controls this process. Um, and, and please don't, you know, mistake my words. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for growth and um, I especially ta in regard to taking care of our elderly, I think that's a, something that unfortunately is lacking in the state and in, in the state of Maine. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see um, anything that can help that. I just, I also have, you know, concerns about where you're located and, you know, all those good things. So I just wanted to ask the question. So thank you. I appreciate the answer. Thank you. All right. So, Sean. I just, uh, to the town manager's point, um, 
and not to come across as a rebuttal, but I mean, today's decisions are tomorrow's precedences. And when, you know, contract zoning, in my opinion, is a, um, generally speaking, should be an exception. And if you continue to extend on a contract zone, then I think that, um, you know, you extend once, you extend twice, you know, at what point do you then sit down and look at your ordinances and say maybe we have the ordinance completely wrong and that we should allow this type of growth automatically within the ordinance. So to me, it's a process issue around ordinances and contract zones and why I brought it up. So is there any other discussion on our first reading and refer to planning board this proposal? Mm -hmm. Ed? I'd just like to say I think that they're a fantastic uh, neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, they're our biggest taxpayer as far as I know. Um, and they're trying to expand on a piece of property that uh, a good chunk of it is uh, conservation land. So they've got this small little piece of land that they're just trying to uh, expand and meet their their growth needs. Uh, and I think it's uh, it, it's a it's a good project, and I certainly will support it. Um, any other discussion? All right. Oh, Bill? I, I, to pick up on Ed's comment, I find the scope of this project to be far more attractive than the scope of the project that was presented earlier, for, right. to which I received uh, quite a few inquiries uh, from the Piper Shores people. Uh, and so uh, it, I, I would endorse, I think this is in scale quite appropriate. All right, so last one to go will be me. And I um, just wanted to touch base. Um, for, first and foremost, I do just want to, for the folks at home and the benefit, although we did have a workshop on the Piper Shores and then we kind of talked around it, um, this is um, not the full scope of what was at that workshop. This is just the um, expansion piece of the Holbrook building. And I would like to reiterate again that it is not any kind of an affiliation to me. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I do not have a bias I there. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it is, you know, certainly necessary, you know, in this day and age, um, Maine is probably um, one of the, I believe we are really? the eldest state are pretty darn close to it anyway. So um, these needs do grow mm -hmm. as, as our population ages, um, and especially the skilled, um, skill, skilled care setting. Um, mm -hmm. I did actually once upon a time work on a secure unit, and then that has certainly um, some blessed folks that, that take on that challenge to work there, and, and it is a unique individual, and, and, and they should be, we should be absolutely kissing the feet they have because that's a hard job. So um, I will, my, my intention tonight is to vote to support for the first reading and refer over to the planning board. Um, I think just to my point of, um, I, you know, kind of piggybacking off of some of the earlier comments, um, I don't necessarily have an issue, but um, it is a contract zone, mm -hmm. which makes it a little bit different. And, and yes, given that if it was in its appropriate zone, we wouldn't need the contract zone. And the underlying kind of principle behind a contract zone was that it has to meet a greater good for the community. Mm -hmm. Certainly it's arguable that um, Piper Shores does meet a greater good. Um, what I'm looking for is Scarborough's greater good. So um, I, I do dare say that it is likely that um, it is not largely Scarborough residents that come to Piper Shores. It is resident people that become Scarborough residents. So my question as a counselor became, what is Scarborough's benefit? Yes, there's a tax increase. Yes, there is some more stock of housing. And if this is going to be stock of housing, then to me it really tied to of, you know, that, that, that affordable piece needs to come in. Um, so that will be, um, for me as a counselor, what I'm looking for when we come to the point of a second reading. Where, where's the affordable piece? If that's, you know, we are meeting that in some kind of a dynamic with your beds, if we can meet that with the in loof and in-kind fee, um, whatever that dynamic is, I'm, I'm a little open to, but I, I think it's an important piece to that. So. 
Um, at this point, we do have a first, and we have a second to refer to planning board. And all those in favor? And it is unanimous. So now we are off to order number 14-104, which is act on the request from the deputy tax collector for a waiver of foreclosure on the following properties for David Drive, Map T003, Lot 004. Those are zeros, not O's, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I'm going to shorten this. 10 David Drive, 407 Topaz Drive, 29 Matthews Way, and 20 Crystal Lane, and 62 Trotwood Street, and authorize the town manager to sign the necessary documentation. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to this matter now that the room is almost empty? <laughs> is there something we said? <laughs> All right, see, seeing none, um, we'll, we'll close the public comment portion of that. And is there a motion? Move approval. Second. And second. And is there any discussion? No. Um, Sean. Um, I have been around a long time, and I think this is the first time I've ever seen this. So can I get some education on what we're doing? Certainly. Um, these are for 2012 taxes. Those taxes uh, have gone unpaid and have matured to the point 18 months late mm -hmm. uh, that automatic foreclosure is pending. Uh, in fact, it's pending this Friday, uh, December 19th. Mm. Uh, the way the, the statute is formed, it's automatic uh, unless the council takes some action otherwise. And that this action uh, directs myself and staff, you actually waive that foreclosure action from happening. And the reason we do that in the instance of these, what, six properties is that uh, they're all manufactured homes mm -hmm. and um, perhaps it's a bit it's counterintuitive, but uh, there, there's not much of any uh, asset, if you will. In fact, it could be argued that there's more of a liability that mm -hmm. comes with ownership. And so uh, we come to you in this capacity and ask for a uh, waiver of these. There are many others that are in similar status that we don't ask for this relief. Oh, uh, one follow-up question? Um, well, maybe, um, so, no, sorry, there is a motion. <laughs> um, so, no, the question I have is, um, I, I don't disagree with this, I just, um, I just don't remember dealing with this before. Um, how do we determine which ones we do and which ones we don't? Well, it's it's uh, not an exact science. A lot of it has to do with the assessed value mm -hmm. and an appreciation for the the quality and, and the value of the asset of the property. Um, it's not our standard practice, but uh, we we are, really do view these as uh, potentially liabilities. The town will be left. Uh, these are facility structures that sit on leased land in a in a park, uh, and oftentimes we're left with uh, a big bill to dispose of of these. Um, once I just want to make sure that we set ourselves up for the right headline on this one. This, uh, <laughs> this is a matter of routine. I, I, well, I mean, I'd hate to have it say residents don't the pay their taxes it, and we don't foreclose. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Bill? Uh, does someone actually, on behalf of the town, uh, look at the properties on an individual basis? I believe the code office does go out at the direction of the, uh, the deputy tax clerk who's, who's handling these sorts of things. I can tell you this: these last two weeks and these next two days are very difficult on staff because we're working with the, the last few town residents that uh, find themselves in the unfortunate predicament of, mm. of having their property foreclosed on, and um, it, it's a terrible process for anyone to go through. So, uh, but to answer your question, yes, we do have a sense of, of um, quality and, and uh, value of those structures. Uh, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Tom, uh, um, it's just for the edification of people who may be watching and for myself. The foreclosure process by cities and towns for non-payment of taxes, um, if someone has set up a payment plan with the town, even if it's a minimal payment plan, so to speak, does that help prevent foreclosure? Yes, the council has a policy which uh, I'm required to follow and it does allow for payment installment plans. Okay. Uh, as a technical matter, foreclosure actually occurs, but right. the installment plan, uh, so long as the agreement is met by both parties, uh, particularly the taxpayer, yeah. we agree to discharge that lien um, and return that property to them. So technically, the, the, the plan doesn't need to be in place before, before foreclosure, right. and I'm working with 
two or three residents right now to do just that. Right. And, and my point in asking that is just so people will know that if you're ever in that predicament, the best thing to do is to talk to somebody. There is a distinguishment, I, uh, an important one in that policy uh, that that uh, latitude is directed toward a single uh, primary residence only. Right, if it's a right. second home or a commercial property right. or an income property, sure. that is not an option. Right. right. But for single families, yeah, they should definitely talk to somebody. Primary residence, yep. yes. Primary residence. All right. Any other discussion? Mm, nope. All right. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. So, item number nine is standing in special committee and liaison report. And we'll go ahead and well, we'll start on your end, John. Finance. Uh, let me go ahead and pass this down to the one. Um, time flies. I believe it's this past week. <laughs> um, the finance committee had its uh, first meeting. It was actually a joint workshop with the school board's finance committee. We also had president, um, our town manager, and finance director, as well as the superintendent of schools. And uh, his, I think her title is business manager, um, somewhat something in that rank. We had a really nice open workshop discussion about prioritization of our relationship and how do we move forward. Um, the document that I passed out this evening was um, um, just for edification. Um, we had asked each of the town councilors as well as each of the school board members to complete a survey. It was a three-question survey that said, please list. Um, priorities basically within three topic categories, you know, how do you want to look at how we plan, how do we set goals, and then how do we communicate. Um, what you are receiving is the feedback. It's, um, um, it is uh, broken down by the town council's responses and then also the school board's responses. Um, they are not, we did not of course provide uh, this is what, who said what type of thing because that's not really important. Um, but what we've also provided is an executive summary, that's the very first page of where we found our commonalities and how we would like to move forward. And so we wanted you to see what those areas are and really I'm at the highest level to, for the public. Um, we really found a total of seven areas. The first was uh, to have more joint sessions between the town council and the school board um, to uh, look at how we do our budget presentation. Um, and I've expressed uh, both in comments to their board as well as here how we, uh, I believe, might be approaching that really from a collaborative perspective. Mm -hmm. To have an open forum or a town hall style of meeting with the public when we make that presentation to also receive feedback as part of that. To look at long-term planning, we've talked a little bit about that in our workshop uh, earlier this evening. Uh, look at collaborative and jo joint goal setting. Identify external impacts on our budget and then to engage the leg legislative delegation as it relates to our budget considerations for both of our sides. Mm -hmm. So we thought that this was a very fair representation of the common uh, um, themes that we read in the comments that everyone provided. Um, our next step is going to be to, one, is to set up our regular uh, finance committee meeting for the town council, but to also look at um, what are the joint workshop opportunities that we have. And really, we're looking at the joint workshops of our committees. It's the finance com two finance committees. Um, otherwise, we might as well just have one um, big boardroom with everyone sitting in it, and that can be very difficult. So um, the joint workshop theme is really f uh, focused on our uh, committee in itself. So we're going through that planning process. I will tell you that um, it is a little difficult uh, with the holiday season um, and the new year coming on us very quickly. We're hoping to get a little bit of a, a bigger head start on this. We might have to wait a couple of weeks based on the responses. We did send a survey out to everyone, um, and we did get our feedback. So you'll be receiving announcements about when those uh, workshops are going to be as well as when our first budget cycle is going to be. And our first workshop being the finance committees is that we'll begin um, setting up prioritizations and timelines. We are talking about what we would like to see for a timeline and see if we can be a little bit more effective in our presentations from the department heads and incorporating them into this philosophy. And uh, we'll take it from there. Any questions? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I am the uh, newly appointed uh, uh, liaison to the Scarborough Community Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we met Monday morning. Uh, uh, there was a pre presentation by the Friends of Scarborough Hockey uh, for their facility, and that uh, and a number of questions asked of them, and also uh, uh, about the site selection. And I was asked and did have the opportunity to explain the site selection process. So. 
that was uh, uh, good to be there. Uh, yesterday, uh, I attended the uh, Greater Portland Chamber of Commerce. We are a part of that uh, uh, organization, uh, Scarborough, uh, and they have a legislative committee uh, uh, which was taking up the issue of uh, minimum wage. Uh, that's before the City of Portland at the present time. Uh, and uh, it is not on our plate, but it was very educational. Uh, it demonstrated that it is a very complicated uh, subject, uh, and it's really a part of a bigger discussion about uh, opportunities and quality of life, uh, and it seemed to me as, it, as the discussion shook out that uh, uh, a uh, increase in the minimum wage was just one small piece of a much bigger picture, uh, uh, and that bigger picture really ought to look more at the education of workforce uh, uh, more than any other factor, and education generally, uh, public education. So uh, that, I thought, was an uh, important message that I came away with. Uh, the Energy Committee, uh, uh, I'm going to liaise on to that. I met uh, uh, with them today. We had a very good session, uh, and I was spurred on by our chair's request to uh, 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 identify projects that would be good goals, and I reported that out already. Thank you. Henry? Yes. Um, Long Range Planning Committee met, and I'm just looking back at uh, what the agenda was. I've been in so many meetings the last few days. I'm like, which one was that? Mm -hmm. um, we, we're continuing our discussions on uh, the zoning changes for Higgins Beach that will eventually also be Pine Point and discussed how you know we want to keep the Higgins Beach community involved. And I want to thank Councilors Blaze and Donovan for having, being willing to give some input on that also as residents of those particular areas. Uh, in essence, what we're looking at is how to make uh, zoning more realistic, because whenever someone wants to do something in Higgins Beach or Prime Point, they are going to the Zoning Board of Appeals all the time and to try to fix that a little bit so that's not happening. And also make sure that the type of development that goes on in those areas is, is something that meets and is consistent with what, what people want down there. Um, you will be happy to know that the Long Range Planning Committee is going to do a town facility study, uh, a long range one, <laughs> looking at you know fire department, police, as far as buildings and structures and whatnot. Um, also, uh, doing some draft looking at frontage and lot width to do a space and bulk standards. I didn't realize that, in so, and this goes to our ordinances, Kate, <laughs> uh, that we don't, in many places, apparently have, you know, it'll be 50 by whatever or, or square footage, which I'm used to working with a lot in my business. Uh, and then we did a recap of the North Scarborough South Gorham PAX meeting, and I can't remember, did I report on that already? Anyway, it, it was a disaster. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it, it went over like a lead balloon, that's all I can say. And we're going to continue to work on that because the people who were at the meeting, myself included, were like, well, it's all about transportation, it's all about transportation, it's all about the traffic issues. And essentially what these planners were trying to get across, and it didn't come across correctly, was that if you do some planning and zoning and whatever, they won't change Gorham Road into a four-lane highway. Um, it will force them to then look at other alternatives, but that didn't come across right. And anyway, Dan, Tom, and I are going to meet and try to bring in Representative McLean, whom I haven't talked yet, so if he sees me talking about this, I'll be calling him. He's on the Transportation Committee for the state to look at um, the traffic issues up in that area because they are pretty bad. Um, Conservation Commission, we did not meet. We'll be meeting in January. And then the Legislative Policy Committee of the Maine Municipal will also be in January because the legislature doesn't really start its work until, I believe it's Tuesday the 6th of January, so that's it for me. Okay, hey. Uh, ordinance met yesterday. We've had uh, a pretty packed agenda, and I'm actually going to be updating that agenda and some pieces <coughs> that we talked about on my Facebook page, and I'm going to link it to Twitter 
which is going to lead me into my next piece um, where I'm going to be starting to work on our communication and PR for the Council. And I have a meeting actually with um, Chair Holbrook and Tom after Christmas to kind of start talking about that and getting some things going and trying to work on um, our outreach and our transparency. I know we keep using the word transparency, but um, that is probably the best word that we could use to describe what we're going to be trying to do. Um, we're going to try to just open up the council a little bit more and um, be meeting more with, our, with the people that voted us in to these seats. Um, Going back to ordinance, our next meeting is January 20th at 1 o'clock. Um, we do w welcome the public, and our agenda will be posted. And I'll also be posting that um, on Facebook and Twitter as well. And that's the only two things I have. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the library meets tomorrow night. Our, we have library board tomorrow night, so I don't have an update on that tonight. Sorry. That's it for me. Ed? Um, the planning board met last Monday, I believe it was. Uh, <coughs> and at that meeting, uh, two members of the board, Alan Paul and David Bufard, both completed, I believe, three, three terms. So they've termed out. Um, both have done an outstanding mm -hmm. job over the years. Alan Paul, I don't know whether you've ever gone to a planning board meeting, but he's probably about the most organized person I've ever seen. Uh, Everything runs smoothly. He's got all the motions down. Of course, I found out that somebody's writing all the motions for him. So <laughs> he's, he's a great he's guy, and uh, uh, the planning board's going to miss both of them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I just want to personally thank both of them for serving. That's it for me. And Peter? Yeah, this will probably be pretty quick. Um, but, um, the newly appointed liaison to two different committees, uh, transportation, and, and both of them were canceled and seniors, and both were can the meetings were canceled, one due to weather this oh. month, and, <laughs> and one due to the holidays, so we'll reconvene in January. Just take it personally. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was the only one in the room. <laughs> uh, um, so that's on to me. So um, I do have some names to post for, for this evening. Um, so we have, just a second to bring that back up. Um, we have Roger Beely as a second alternate for the planning board. And we have Michael Lehman. I lied. I'm not sorry. Did I read that wrong? He wants it. He wants it. Yeah. Okay. Michael Lehman for the Shellfish Conservation Commission. And we have James Stark as a voting member for the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have Mark Maroon as a voting member for the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have Michael Richard as a full voting member for the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have Marty Massisso as a second alternate and Gordon Sandhope as a first alternate of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And that's we want to call you that. That is um, the names we'd like to po post for appointment. Yep, Roger Beely. Yep. And um, so we do have um, Historic Preservation. We'll be meeting Tuesday the 6th at 6.30. And then, of course, we have um, Council, which will be the next day, Wednesday the 7th. Um, during our workshop, we will be having about, um, it's not the first half of the second half, Tom, um, or one of the half hours will be for we'll the first. How's that? We'll get first. Yes. Um, will be a presentation um, for a discussion for us on the first leg of some historic preservation effort, which is the structures list. And so they will talk a little bit about um, what, um, again, it's, it, the concepts were incentive-based programming. Um, so by the town adopting this structures list, what are some of the things that that provides for, for um, relief for the owners and incentives to, to maintain it? Um, so again, this will be the first leg of probably a series, and we'll have a workshop on that um, at the next council meeting or prior to the next council meeting. And... I will. I do not have a date yet, but I will get back to all of you about setting another recap for for the workshop that we had earlier this evening. 
Um, and that's it for me for uh, liaison reports at the moment. And so we will go ahead and scoot over to Tom for the manager's report. Yes, just a few points of interest. Um, I see Jeremy Winterstein still sticking around. I just really wanted to take a moment and just appreciate uh, all the all the work. He is the unsung hero. Uh, he mm -hmm. uh, works tirelessly on these on these projects, and and someone I've gotten to know quite well and work closely with, and very much appreciate just his uh, work ethic and professionalism throughout. And and certainly uh, personally pleased to be part of the Benjamin Farm. That's. Uh, a real important project that I think future generations are going to look back on last week um, and and maybe take note of who's on council and, and made that happen. So a uh, very good day for Scarborough for sure. Yeah. I also want to mention we did receive notice from uh, from FEMA that they are looking at, uh, again, reintroducing the flood maps. I'm not aware that there's been much of any change to the versions that were last sent out. This will be the third time they try. Uh, so we're um, anxiously awaiting that process. <laughs> I think it will occur sometime over the spring of this year. Um, depending on those final maps that are reissued, uh, we are prepared with consultant support to potentially file appeals to make sure we're looking out for the best interest of ourselves and our and our property owners. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to mention the um, Friends of Scarborough Hockey are actually on the agenda for the planning board at their July, excuse me, July, July. January, <laughs> January 5th meeting for sketch plan. And I was a bit oh, surprised to hear how quickly that's moving forward. But as I thought about it more, I mean, the, the requirements of sketch plan submission are fairly right. light, and they're really intended to be a sounding board. And so I think it's probably is very healthy to uh, start to get this project and the site and some of those details exposed to um, a larger conversation. There's certainly public uh, component of that, and so that might be quite um, eye-opening and helpful for the council as this project moves forward. Those are at seven, right? Tom? I believe uh, 7, PM. seven p.m. for planning boards. Just in case the public wanted to. And lastly, I'm pleased to mention. Uh, I feel like a broken record on this tri-generation project, but uh, this week we did finally uh, execute the final contract with Selfgen, a local <coughs> company, for. Uh, uh, a design build um, contract to build a tri generation uh, facility right here next to town hall to provide for heating, cooling, and electric needs for this facility. Um, the reason for the delay, uh, we, we were working on estimates that were over two years old, so they had to go back out to the market, price the equipment, and get labor costs, and so we're all within budget and pleased to report, and we expect we'll be operational in late May, early June. Uh, just in time for cooling season, which is, uh, mm. believe it or not, more important and a bigger deal to the bottom line than heating season for us. Oh, yeah. So with that, uh, I'm available for questions. All right. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next item, which is council member comments. And we'll start on the other end with Peter. Hey, no comments. Just happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. And Ed? I just want to wish everybody a very safe and happy holiday season and look forward to working with you all next year. Okay. I actually do have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're shocked. Um, I'll make it quick, though. Um, clink bags, clink bags um, for uh, your neighbors for the heat program. Um, I'm going to try to start working with um, that with some of our PR outreach. Um, it's a big deal. I'm actually working on something right now where I'm hoping going to put something together um, around um, Scarborough grounds where we could have people come in um, and maybe meet some of the counselors and bring some bags or make some donations. Um, I know that you know the majority of us are lucky that we have um, that we live in homes that are that are heated, but there are definitely some of our elderly population and um, some of even I know that my children go to school with some kids that um, her, their parents are really really struggling this season to heat their homes, and that's a really um, sad and scary thing for me. So um, it's really important to get out there, and it's very easy to fill up a couple bags. Um, of bottles and drop them off at Clink and it goes right into um, the Project Grace Fund and really is making a difference. So I really encourage people to, they're right um, 
next to Tody um, at the clerk's office. Very easy to get. I will personally deliver them to you if you send me an email. Um, I'm happy to pick them up and uh, really would love to get something going before Christmas. So I would hate for parents to have to decide between buying their child a Christmas present and heating their home. That to me is a very sad thing. Um, and I think that is it for me, except Merry Christmas. I hope um, that you're surrounded by the people that you love. All right. Uh, Steve Marie? No, I don't have anything to add. I'm going to say thank you, Kate, for taking up the clink bag thing. Also, between the three of us, we'll really get this rolling. <laughs> Um, I know I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and crazy Kwanzaa and whatever you do, um, and see you next year. Uh, just a comment to pick up on Tom's comment about the uh, FEMA maps. Uh, they've really they've languished, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I've tried to stay close because I live at the beach. I have a lot of people who are interested in this issue. I've connected with uh, Dory Hoy who really has an extensive list of, e of email uh, addresses that she keeps people informed, and I, in turn, keep her informed by staying in touch with the planning department. Uh, uh, Jay Chase and the planning department uh, watched an online live session with FEMA uh, this week, uh, and there was no action uh, presently planned on the coastal area of maps. They were working on the, the uh, rivers that are flowing in. Uh, and the uh, assessment by our planning department was that the m maps will actually not be finalized, which is important for the purposes of appeals, mm -hmm. until the summer of 2016. Uh, so that we'll get some action maybe next summer uh, uh, out of this in terms of uh, them starting to have public hearings because they still have not held the public hearings for the uh, for the uh, people who are being affected by all this. So for those people who are taking uh, 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 holding their breath, you can take a breath because it's it, it's 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 got away. And if you have anyone out there who actually would like to get on the email distribution list, mm -hmm. uh, just email me, and I'll make sure that Dory Hoy then adds it, uh, and I use her as the conduit for information uh, out. It's a little bit of an informal structure, but so far we're keeping people informed. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, on the Energy Committee, Deb McDonough, a very valuable member of that Energy Committee, uh, is her term is up. Uh, and she has other pursuits, uh, uh, and she will be missed. Mm -hmm. But if you have, uh, if you have somebody in mind, or somebody out there is considering that the energy committee, it's an exciting area. If you like, mm -hmm. kind of advancements in the way in which uh, we try and deal with important issues uh, of energy and conservation, please put your name in. Thank Sean? you. Uh, a couple items. First is I forgot to mention uh, two uh, committee assignment uh, liaison ships uh, only because they hadn't met, but I did want you to know SEDCO is actually meeting tomorrow morning at 7.30, and I'll be uh, attending my first meeting. I'm looking very much to working with Karen and the rest of the board, um, including Kevin Freeman, the chair. He's done a great job around town, um, as well as Eco Maine is tomorrow evening starting at 4 p.m. I'm actually not able to attend because of a pre-assignment uh, commitment, but um, the other delegate, which is Mike Shaw, will be in attendance, so we are representative. Um, but uh, I expect to be able to uh, take care of that uh, starting in January. Um, before I give thanks for the to season, I did want to mention something that really, I think, um, sends the wrong message, because I think it's absolutely an abomination that people think that they can come to this chamber and either impugn someone else's character by making blasphemous statements and not take it uh, more professionally, um, privately, especially something that was said that this evening. Um, I don't have a problem with people in disagreement and sharing that publicly, but to share something like that is absolutely crude and unreasonable for us to have to tolerate. And I do want to say thank you to the chairwoman for shutting that down as quickly as possible. And I do hope that the manager takes uh, the comment into consideration and that uh, we can address it later, but Chief Moulton has done an incredible job for our community for many, many years, and I think it's absolutely wrong. And um, so I, I you know, want to, in a way, apologize. It's not our fault, but uh, at the same time, I, I know he's a reasonable person to understand what we are dealing with. Um, it's just that, you know, it, it, it touched me off on the first meeting when uh, 
I mean, some people think that this is a theatrics and they can come in here and behave like that, and it's just, it's not right. Um, and uh, we're all supposed to be professionals, we're all neighbors, even from other communities, we're still all neighbors. And so with that, I just want to, oh, I did want to mention about the other comment, Ms. Rancourt, uh, a great person and a wonderful woman. I actually had the chance of serving with her on the school board, also served with her on the town council, sat next to her for many years. So I do appreciate her comments about our veterans. Um, and one of the great things, the first thing I ever did when I came to Scarborough, I got to meet a wonderful man uh, by the name of Ken Dolla, mm -hmm. who for many, 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 many years uh, worked on a police department, fire department. I think he might have been chief at one point in time, but uh, he actually was the organizer of our Memorial Day parade, and he got me involved in organizing that parade, and I still uh, help out with uh, former Councilor Timmy Downs in organizing the parade at Memorial Day. So I want her to know that I'm going to take her comments very dearly. I'm going to uh, see what I can do. Um, just so that the public understands that the Memorial Day Parade is actually a privately run parade by the American Legion here in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. So we are the ones that organize that, and that's really to protect the town, uh, because as you've uh, probably seen over the years, um, town of Yarmouth had to deal with you know, their Klan Festival parade and people who might not have, um, what's the word, um, they have other interests in what they want to promote in the parade that is not contiguous with the topic or with, uh, with the festivities is kind of the best way I can explain it. So by having it privately done, we can control that because it's the decision of the American Legion of what's in that. But I would like to explore what she's asking. So maybe we do something, um, do a different parade if the town wishes to manage that or um, I'll definitely get the right people to the table from the American Legion. I love the idea about the flag day because we do have a uh, flag retirement ceremony every year. This past year we did a little over, we believe, about 3,000 flag retirements in one ceremony wow. down at the American Legion. So um, while not a flag retirement, I think it would be great to have our Memorial Park flag with flags uh, during that ceremony, one for every veteran. So there's uh, different ideas, and I just want to say thank you to her because it's a great, great mm -hmm. idea that I've wanted to do for years, and this is a great opportunity. And with that, I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, this is a time of uh, thanksgiving in every sense of the word and remembrance. And so personally, I want to say thank you to all of you for your service and to your families, um, as well as to uh, Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Benedict, who just completed their terms. Um, they've done a great job, and I'm really looking forward to the next year. Thank you. So on to me. Um, I'll try to keep this somewhat quick. Um, I do just want to let you all know we do have um, some training for elected officials that will be here at Town Hall. That will be January 8th at 3.30 p.m. And it will be, um, our, our speaker will be Philip Saucier, Saucier? Okay. Saucier. Saucier. Um, from Bernstein Church. And so he will be covering basically all three areas, um, you know, the freedom of information, um, roles of elected officials, um, you know, executive session, you know, be kind of going over all, all, all the legs of what it is for, for a counselor. Um, we're very fortunate and grateful that they were That's able to do that. Cool. And um, like I said, in-house training, so you don't okay. even have to go. January 8th. January 8th at 3.30 p.m. here at Town Hall. We'll send out a reminder Thank as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just got to put it in my book. Yeah. If you won't get me. And um, just to give... Um, a little update on, on the CLING program, and thank you, um, Councillor St. Clair, for really kind of, you know, start, you know, marching forward with that. Um, just some good news, so um, let me pass the torch to you. <laughs> and um, we did, we were able to, I had an update about the CLING program. Right now, um, there's a total of $300.90 from um, the clink bag collection so far. Um, okay. So hopefully we can kind of keep going with that. That's that's a lot of bottles and cans. Um, so thank you to all of those that have you know donated <coughs> your cans to that that purpose and that cause and continue to please do so. And um, I do need to offer um, we do council condolences. Um, so we'd like to offer and extend our condolences to the family of, of Russell um, Sogstill and he was a resident of, of Piper Shores, and um, he was a veteran and, and served his country um, in the Army during World War II. Um, and he also, after that, took a, um, and had a 30-year career with the National Security Agency. Um, and he was, I guess, apparently quite instrumental in their dog park um, that they set up on, on campus for, for their residents. So um, again, you know, our, extend our condolences to, to his family. Uh, and as 
I, I, I do want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and kudos to whatever you celebrate and um, warm, warm wishes to you. And just one last kind of um, piggyback thought um, about our interesting first first few minutes there of our meeting. Oh, yeah. um, you know, I, I just hope that as you know, I, and I have talked a little bit about this um, under my goals and, and, and guiding principles. Um, you know, certainly everybody is entitled to, to you know to their opportunity to share an opinion. Um, it is a fine line between just being vicious and, and malicious and, and, and have you know. So I, again, you know, I, I hope that we can rise above that a little bit. I personally pay no attention to people like that. I, you know, if you're you know, there's a time and a place and an avenue and a venue for everything, and um, you know w when those things start coming up, I personally don't even listen to them. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Can I say something when you're done? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, real quick. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I know that a lot of you know that this is on the Clink program. I know that a lot of you know that um, my son passed away last year, um, and we were look, have been lucky enough to start a foundation in his name. And um, so I just wanted to say that we'll match that 390 for the that's been raised so far. Um, and as a Christmas, just as a way to kind of send us out. Um, and um, so we'll match the 390. And if there's any local businesses out there that might want to also match us, um, I think it would be a great, great um, Christmas thing to do. So we'll make sure we get that check to Town Hall by Friday. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Um, so, well, um, Merry Christmas, everybody, after all. So um, we do have the next item, which will be order number 14-105, act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I of the MRSA 405 regarding a personnel matter relating to the town manager's evaluation and to adjourn from that meeting. Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I thought Jean Reese said. Did you what? say first? Uh, so moved. So moved. Or okay. so second. Uh, all those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a